So welcome to this week's Running Tales episode and today I've got a right treat for you. I've got world record female um, holder for you and it's going to appear on the Guinness Book of Records 2021 which has been a childhood dream and that's Mena Evans. So why is she appearing in the Guinness Book of Records and why is she a world record holder? I'll let her tell you. So Mena, over to you, tell us your running tale. Hi all. Um, okay, so I'm Enna and uh, on the 1st of January of this year, I set off from the very top of New Zealand in uh, Cape Renga um, and started my run um, of the full length of New Zealand, both islands, North Island and South Island. And 35 days, 27 minutes later, I finished at the very bottom in, at Bluff, at the bottom of the South Island and um, became a Guinness World Record holder for doing so, for fastest female to run the full length. So what was the, was there a record holder before you, uh, female, that done it? There was, although I don't know uh, exactly who it was. When you apply, or well, at least when I applied um, to, to go for the record, I was only told of the time that I had to beat, which was 52 days. So, um, so that's all I had to go by. So yes, but that was enough. <laughs> wow. So what training, like from when you decided to when you actually did it, how long was the planning and training? Okay. Um, so uh, it first started off, um, th there's a bit of a story to, 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 the, to uh, the background of New Zealand. Um, my dad sadly passed away in uh, 2017 and I decided to run the full length of Britain in his memory. So the summer of 2018, having only been running for um, just over a year, um, I, I did um, joggle John O'Groats to Land's End in his memory. Um, and that was done uh, 30, in 37 days. And just as I came towards the end of that challenge, I was having a time of my life and I thought, you know what, I need something else to go for now. Um, because I'd been so focused and so determined and enjoyed every minute of the run up to Joggle and Joggle itself. So I thought, you know what, let's go for something bigger and harder and longer. And that's when I dreamt up New Zealand in the last week of Joggle. And so um, when I finished Joggle, um, I didn't really stop training. I just carried on. And then, um, 20, uh, as I said, January 2020, then, um, well, prior to that, I flew out to New Zealand. And that's when, uh, that's when I started that challenge. So you've only been running one year before Joggle? Um, I dabbled a little bit, like 10 years before, um, from a non-runner. I hated running at school. Um, it was only really sort of like my mid-20s, late-20s that... I did a little bit of running and then aimed to do a marathon. So um, I ended up doing London Marathon. And then because life sort of took a different direction, I stopped running. Um, and then so I took up running again 10 years later, um, as I said, for my, for my dad um, uh, at his retirement party. Uh, six years before he passed away he asked me if I wanted to walk John O'Groats to Land's End with him and so when I decided to do that in his memory I thought you know I can't walk it walking would just take too long yeah so um, that's when I thought you know I've got to I've got to run it because I've got you know I've got a, a young son to look after and a job um, <laughs> so you know I couldn't take too much time out so yeah and that's when I started um, I started running and it's actually something that I found that um, my body copes with really really well and I actually really love the psychological aspect of it as well you know ultra running it's uh, yeah it ticks all my boxes and the scenery you must have seen some amazing scenery in both countries UK and New Zealand that you never thought really existed yes yeah well, I did um you know it's always been sort of a dream really to to um travel the full length of uh, of Britain you know because it's hadn't really vent, uh, ventured further than than Wales really so you know um when I d d did a bit of traveling when I was younger and people would be like so what's Scotland like what's Ireland like just be like, I no agree idea. agree yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I saw it up close and personal um, on foot and, um, and I, I ran as many trails as I could through Britain. Uh, so I did like the West Highland Way in Scotland, 
Offers Dyke, which runs through the, the Welsh English border and then finished off with a Cornish coastal pass. And they were mind blowing, absolutely amazing. And um, unfortunately, through New Zealand, I had to take the fastest route. So it was mainly roads, oh. but you know, it, it was. I mean, the scenery was fantastic. South Island in particular was mind blowing, it was stunning. So so how did you get from the North Island to the South? Because isn't that Wellington and it's quite a, a windy, I've heard a windy patch, you know, when you're flying over, yeah. you've got to have a strong yeah. st stomach. How did you cross over to the next island? I, I, I didn't swim. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I, fair. Um, I ran, <laughs> I, I don't swim, <laughs> but um, I ran, um, I think it was uh, 20, five miles that day because that's all I had left of the North Island and then took a ferry that night um, and then started running when I that that's allowed Guinness World Record allows you to catch a ferry from one island to the next and then woke up the next morning and then obviously continued then um, through the South Island so yeah no that the ferry crossing is allowed. So how many miles a day on average was you doing at New Zealand? So the North Island, um, both mum and my son were with me. So it was treated a little bit more like a, a holiday. So um, I probably did uh, anything between 34 and 38 miles. Um, and just so I could get done and then spend some time with my son at the end of each day and mum. Um, and then um, when we got to the bottom of the North Island, I said goodbye to them. And I then went alone with John the driver um throughout the the rest of the south island and it was just like right this is it now time to you know it the, the holidays kind of is on hold a little bit and let's just get this done so um pretty much just cranked out 40 miles every day um throughout the the south island then just to get it done really and who was at you at the end to make sure that you had done it and was you with being the guinness book of records how do they monitor you like you say I'm going to do it does someone come out at different stages to, to track you um so I had two trackers on um I had a GPS and uh another one what is it um uh another tracker anyway just in case one <laughs> or the other failed so and then we needed like there's so much that goes into it it's crazy the paperwork is just you know it's it's you can understand why you know because it needs the proof but and yeah every um every day had to be videoed and photos taken i needed witnesses throughout the day so john the driver um he was amazing at that he woke up every morning he would you know i'd be getting ready to go for a run and john would be looking for witnesses at like 5 30 6 o'clock in the morning and then do the same again when i finished which sometimes you know is pretty difficult because you never knew where you were going to end up um and, and then, in a strange um, country as well exactly you know but he was he was incredible at that he was quite a charmer so um he, he really enjoyed that challenge um and then i had so uh, mum and my son were there, as I said, through the North Island. Mum was an amazing chef, so she, she, she cooked for me. And, um, but when they went home, it was just me and John, then uh, the driver um, through the South Island. And so bless him, he took on uh, the challenge of driving and then cooking and um, yeah. And- uh, Finding witnesses. Two of us <laughs> there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you did you yeah. know did you know John before the challenge or was it the first time in New Zealand? No, um, he was actually it was quite poignant because John was uh, a close friend of my dad's, so oh. um, and a, a long term friend. Um, so it was in a way it was quite nice to sort of have um, you know to be able to chat with John in the evenings about you know memories of dad and the times that they'd shared so it was almost like you know it was dad sort of there in spirit yeah. you know, um, again and um, so that was really really special and um, yeah and uh, sadly um, John actually passed away uh, a month ago so I just want to offer my condolences to his family um, you know we've been really sadly missed but he was you know he was a, an absolute legend so um, I'm just so glad that he, we managed to get to, 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 to do that you know that one last trip um, and so yeah it's uh, it was quite uh, poignant and special.
Well, it sounds like he had an amazing journey as well. 35 days on the road with you and, you know, just yeah. driving and seeing. For a mid, you know, mid-70s, you know, he was just incredible, you know, for, for, for what, he was, what he did, getting up every morning. Like, he was the one that woke me up at uh, half past four or five o'clock in the morning like you know time to get up and uh yeah um and and then just the endurance of the day bless him and some quite often he would meet me at places and he'd be like manna there's a bridge up there you're gonna have real problems with and so um you know and, and we tackled that together so um because it became less about the running and more about the challenges that lay ahead of us each day so it was down to you know some of the roads were really dangerous uh, bridges weren't pedestrian friendly, the weather, you know, the route, traffic works, it was all sorts, all sorts. I mean, it was, the running was a given, that was, that was the easy part. It was all the other bits then that actually got, you know, more difficult as we, as yeah. we went on. But yeah, what, he certainly helped get through that. Uh, and what was the finish like, you know, when you'd done it? Um, you... you know what, you, you, you envisage it like every day um, because you, you just, you want to, we want to finish. And um, it's that, the, um, you imagine the euphoria and everything, you know, as, 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 as you finish, like the, the, the thing, the rushing and of all the memories and everything, because that, I had that through juggle throughout. Um, but actually, you know what, um, it's, it's actually a bit of a, um, a little bit of a disappointment, I think, because, <laughs> You know, when you finish, you're in a strange country and, and it's quite early in the day as well. So they, the, the only people that were there were, were tourists and they were just like, what's going on? And also I did this live feed as well, you know, so on my Facebook page and I got, I told everybody that this is the time I'm going to be finished in the UK and New Zealand. And I got quite a lot of support. And um, I just remember just as I got to like a, a half a mile around the corner from the finish, the post, and John was just like, the signal's gonna cut out. And so, you know, I was talking for about 10, waffling on and on in a crazy moment of euphoria <laughs> and all this business 10 minutes before. And literally my phone, I was just like, I can see it, I can see it. And my phone went dead and um, oh, nobody no. could hear me or see me. And, and then the next minute, of course, you know, I just had all these messages going like, oh my God, did you finish? Did you get oh. there? <laughs> After all that, and, that. Left a <laughs> and so you know, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, we finished, and um, and uh, you know, John and I went off and had something to eat, and then I literally somebody had kindly um had uh, paid for a room for me to stay in a hotel right at the end at the 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 post there. So the next, I, I I went to bed, and the next day I just lay there for hours, just like trying to let the brain catch up with the body, and it was quite yeah, it was quite surreal, just. Uh, lots of memories and thoughts and what had just happened all rushing at once so it took me a while to sort of uh, digest it all but uh, yeah I can imagine after something and being on such a big high did you have a big mm. did you have a big come down you know like oh yeah, yeah so, it was um yeah it was I when I finished um you know, it was a, a day or two where I just had to process it all and what had just happened. And then, then I just missed my son, you know, I was just, I just really wanted to, uh, we had a, a few, like sort of four or five days. Cause I had to have, um, you know, a, a plan B just in case, uh, it took me longer, um, yeah. to run than, than, than I planned. Um, but yeah, so for four or five days, I just wanted to, to get home, um, and, and be with my son. Although we did, you know, we did, uh, sort of make our way gradually. So I could, we could do a little bit of a, the tourist thing as well. Cause, uh, we dashed through, um, throughout the whole of New Zealand. So that was quite nice, but yeah, I mean, and then I got home and then it was all crazy. You know, people were trying to, um, book me for talks and, and, uh, this, that and the other and then of course um the pandemic happened <laughs> and then so that was all cancelled um oh. and literally you know from that I had like three I was meant to do the running show and all this and everything literally just disappeared overnight so not only um you know with lockdown um all the races and everything and on all that sort of stopped uh, just disappeared but of course I was on this sort of 
post New Zealand thing as well. And then I had to move out of my house. So you know what, the three months after, after that were really, you know, they were really hard, really hard. I mean, they were for everybody, but um, it was quite a shock to the system. But, um, you know, now that things have eased and hopefully oh, it'll stay that way, um, yeah. sort of getting back to some sort of n- normality again. But uh, yeah, it was, it was testing times. Yeah. Well, for sure. that's sad because you've done all that and you should be celebrating, you know, like you said, the running show, you should be like, you know, you're doing a lot of Zooms, I take it, and phone calls and stuff like that online. Yeah. But it's not the same in person that people can physically talk to you and you get yeah. that buzz as well when people want to talk to you. It's that connection yeah well that's because I I wanted to write a book as well but you know it's just even the creative side because you can only sort of be creative and 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 be productive when you're feeling positive and you know well for me anyway um so when all that sort of stopped and sort of the creativity went as well and it was just like oh my god it was just enough just to get through every day really and people like come on man you know if you can run the length of New Zealand you can get through this and it's like oh gosh this is hard now you know this is really difficult to but but yes it was just a case of just getting through but um yeah you know we all did we all did we didn't we you know some had good lockdown some had bad but we've all got through the other side so uh Um, yeah onwards and upwards now isn't it Well, upwards with you, because um, recently you've just done another challenge in Snowdonia. That was last Uh, weekend. It wasn't Snowdonia. Um, I did uh, Sherwood Forest. It was a hundred mile race. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I've seen seen on your Instagram, you have been up Snowdonia recently, because I've seen a picture of you up there. Yes, yeah. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of recceing up there. for the Paddy Buckley round. So a friend of mine um, who was aiming to do it uh, was like, do you want to come along and uh, and <laughs> join me on some recce? He's like, yeah, if it involves <laughs> being up in the mountains, then absolutely. So yeah, I've been enjoying a lot of that. And certainly it's something that I'd like to do next year as well. Is, is, but it won't be a fast time. It'll just, because I haven't got mountains in my legs. I've just got road running legs at the minute. But um, certainly Paddy Buckley is something that I'd like to do next year uh, amongst other things so um yeah yeah just so the Sherwood yeah the Sherwood one you did that was 100 miles you did that in one day what made you decide to do that so did in 22 hours um 34 minutes um but you know uh, as I say we're sort of coming down coming getting through the end of lockdown and just like you know I need a big kick at the ass so uh looked at the races and what was going on and I was like what is it that uh that, that you know I really feel like I can get my teeth into and I thought you know let's just let's just go for the 100 mile and I don't know when you're fit enough for it or, or so I did or so I thought and um and and I haven't done anything more than 40 miles in one day so I thought yeah let's let's just go for it see what happens and if I finish I'll be happy so um I was actually yeah I was quite chuffed to sort of get under 24 hours because clearly New Zealand's still in my legs yeah. so uh yeah no that was that was really yeah it was a good experience I really really enjoyed it as well but now I'm happy with that so uh that's giving me your confidence back as well but it sounds like as well but between New Zealand and the Sherwood have you been doing what average mileage have you been doing have you been out during lockdown um well we had here in wales the uh 15 minute rules you couldn't go any further than 15 minutes drive way so literally it was just a bit of a hamster's wheel sort of leaving i I moved out of my house and in with my boyfriend uh, and his two kids so there were five of us because it was me and my son as well I should point out the reason why I did that was because mum lives with me and she's over 70. So I wanted to keep her isolated. Um, So yeah, um, um, where he lives, um, you know, it's it's sort of a lovely little uh, little, town. So uh, it was a case of just running from the door and doing the same route every day. And it just got a little bit sort of uh, mundane and a bit boring. Um, you know, when I train, usually I mix it up all the time, different trails, uh, different variations of intensity, etc. Whereas that was sort of a bit like Groundhog Day. So really it was only doing sort of 
20, 25 miles um, through lockdown. And then it's been gradually creeping up. So probably only got to about 40 miles on the lead up to the 100 mile race. But um, yeah, I mean, um, th there's no point really increasing the intensity until I know I've got something to sort of, you know, lock on to and, and work towards. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got to about 60 miles before New Zealand anyway, because as a mum and a self-employed dog groomer, it's, it's enough to sort of juggle, you know, but, um, but I spend a lot of time on my feet as well. And that's key. <laughs> true, Hang true. On, please. But what about core work? We hear a lot about it's good to have a strong core. Do you do anything other than just running and focusing on the legs? Yeah. Um, so I do a lot of, uh, uh, circuit training. So I do that one twice a week and then yoga as well, although I haven't done it since um, before uh, lockdown. But uh, yeah, definitely those two, just to mix it up a bit. Um, yeah, the, the, those are in my, uh, in my training programme as well. And what, on a long runs, what do you take in? What, are you a gel person or do you like homemade flapjacks? Or you know, what do you consume when you're doing these long runs? Uh, oh, never gels. Gels are really bad for me. Um, I remember they did the Cardiff Half a couple of years ago and uh, they were handing out free gels and I didn't even need it. And I just took the gel and it had the most horrendous stomach cramps, you know, thereafter. Yeah. So no, I just keep it real, real food um, because it's something that you, you know, something that you look forward to eating. Uh, and I find that the body craves certain things. So like if I want citrus fruit, I'll eat it. If, it, if it's the hand, I'll eat citrus fruit or salt, crisps, you know, whatever. Uh, just listen and, and just get in tune with your body, really. But yeah, I think real food is something that you look forward to eating. Do you not take it out with you? So like you were saying, even when you do a 25 mile run, do you take anything or are you so trained? I've had a previous runner on an episode who does trail running. She can go out and do a marathon and not take anything in she's trained herself and um, yeah the same um i'll probably go uh 20 miles without food um and then take on very little water depending on the temperature um but that's just how you know how i am really um i don't actually drink gallons of water anyway but um yeah no with with if it's a marathon i'm doing then i'll probably take out a snack bar but um, yeah, uh, otherwise anything over that, then it's just sort of taking on food little and often really, just to so, keep the energy levels up. Yeah, what's your favorite race that you've done so far? Favorite race so far? Um, I get asked that a lot. Uh, it's got to be uh, the Nantararian Silver Trail, which is um, near Aberystwyth, so mid Wales. Yeah. Um, it just ticks all the boxes for me. It's got a bit of woodland. It's got a bit of mountain uh, and, and the people that organize it are awesome as well. So they're really good friends of mine. Um, and it's also uh, around my dad's birthday. So it just feel like when I'm doing that race, I just feel at my closest with, with dad, you know? So, uh, yeah, it just ticks all my boxes and I love it. I love that race. Do you think trail, um, sorry, do you think like the long distance running that you do, like the 100 miles and that, do you think that should be in the Olympics? Because it's getting more and more popular. Yeah, I think definitely, you know, since lockdown, people have been doing some, well, and before, in the last few years, people have been doing some incredible things, you know, and uh, yeah, um, I, I think that would be a, I've not really thought about that, but that's, yeah, that's a really good idea, isn't it? I think <laughs> definitely there's def scope for something like that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it gives us oldies, right? A chance to be in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, no, I just think it's... Because <laughs> the Olympics are quite a young sport. It's like, there are lots of young sports, but yeah, but for yeah. 40 year olds, there might be a chance. <laughs> well, no, being honest, it's like, I love watching the elites long distance, you know, at the, the Olympics. I'm just glued, even marathons. I'm just like, when they do the London and it's just yeah. el elite marathon runners, I was like, yeah, because I just love that. And I'm just thinking, amazing. with an ultra, the distances like yourself, Brendan, and others that I know that do, like, it'd be just interesting to follow you guys and just see what, you know, be part of that journey with you and it is televised and just, you know, how do you do it? Yeah. Still, even talking to you now, it's hard to picture, you know, you 
running 100 miles in 22 hours, all I keep thinking is, how do you do it? You must be a robot. And do you, you know, do you get, do you get told that a lot, you know? There is an element of it when you, you have to treat your body like a machine because, you know, what you put in, you get out. Definitely, you've got to think, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like it's big headed, but certainly when no. you're doing those distances, especially on a day to day basis, you've got to you've got to treat it like a machine. You know, you've got to think about what you eat, how you treat your body, how you, you know, the recovery, everything about it. Um, and 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 then you get in tune with it as well. So you start listening to to niggles and know how to, to fix that. But yeah, yeah it's uh there's definitely an element of that so i've got you thinking now olympics yeah so when you're <laughs> back to normal and you know with the right people bring it up <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so you never know unless you ask you know so so what's next for you men <laughs> <laughs> what's next for you okay right so um I think with um, it, with everything that's going on this year um, and the likelihood of, well, there's certainly lots of lockdowns happening locally here. So I'm going to just concentrate on next year. And uh, so one of the things that I'd like to do is to go for the FKT for the Welsh coastal path, uh, you know, which is 860 odd miles. Um, but I'd like to go for the fastest uh, female time for doing that. So that's that's the first thing. I've got um, Ultra Romania race in August. Uh, I've been invited to go out to do that, which would be epic because like I would never think to go to Romania on a holiday, but like to, to actually run it and a, what a way to see a country as well, you know. Amazing. So um, so there's that, and there's the, there's, uh, the Paddy Buckley round, which I'd like to do, and then uh, the year after that, I've got my eye on a country. Um, but with everything that's going on the way that it is at the minute, I just have to sort of keep that idea floating. Um, I've already applied through the Guinness World Records to, to, to do it. So it's uh, the, the stepping stones have started and they're in place. So we'll see what happens now. Oh, I'm excited. So another country to run across. I like this. Yeah. See, yes. my, my idea for the Olympics is getting higher now. Sod the 100 miles. We need going across... <laughs> Going across the world, you know. <laughs> so, so uh, even better for deaf people. <laughs> so, to round this up, Mena, for anyone that's thinking about running, what advice would you give them? Um, I would say, as I mentioned before, uh, mix it up. Don't, um, you know, don't just go out and do the same route every day, day in, day out. Um, you know, do things that inspire you. Get out amongst the trees, into your local woodlands, in the parks, get off the road, mix it all up. Because trail running actually, you know, will make you a stronger runner. I always say that um, less for as well, you know, and it just mixes up the different muscle groups so you're not pounding on the same joints, etc. cetera. Um, get out and look on social media there are so many people out there um doing some incredible things right now so you know just try and get some sort of inspiration in that way um and and yeah just keep focused stay uh determined fix on that road that race that you that you think that you know you, you want to have a go at doing and, and go for it hey thank you i'll end it there